Hey, this is Andrew Brown, and we're at the start of our journey asking the most important question first, which is, what is a developer associate? It is a developer-focused certification. Sorry for that abrupt intro. I just kind of forgot to get it started here. Um, but yeah, it's a developer-focused certification teaching build servers, deploy servers, CI/CD workflows for web applications to the cloud. You might ask, why do I have an asterisk there? Because, you know, to me, to me, most of the things that you're going to be building are going to be web apps. Um, but you know, there are different kinds of apps besides web apps. So to be fair, I put an asterisk on it. So we can just kind of think of this as, if I get my pen tool out here, as any kind of application, okay? Uh, you will be working with AWS programmatically, so APIs, SDKs, CL, uh, CLIs, and IAC. Uh, and we uh, will be focused on developer tools that are in the AWS ecosystem to improve your developer experience. Um, and the other idea here is we want to develop a cloud-first mindset when building applications. The course code for this certification is the DVA C02. Um, make sure you check the course code for the exam that you're taking because if there's a newer one, this course could be out of date. However, the DVA C03 is very overdue, so I have a feeling they're going to change it to C03. Uh, and this course will still be up to date, but you know, be mindful of how long ago I published this course versus uh, uh, when the DVA C03 comes out, if and when it comes out. Uh, but right now, as of this time of video, it's still DVA C02. A uh, developer associate can be challenging if you do not have programming or app development background skills, but do not worry. I include a lot of this into the course. That's why the, the labs are so long because we're spending time doing things uh, besides just cloud, building that foundational knowledge so that you can really do the job for real. Consider the AWS developer associate if you want to work as a cloud developer. So uh, the idea here is a cloud developer is just an app developer with cloud skills. It's as simple as that. If you enjoy building apps, feature development, want some DevOps responsibilities such as deployment, but you don't want to be maintaining the infrastructure, or you don't want to be doing grand scheming, large architectures, then this is the role for you. If you enjoy the following tasks, working with multiple programming languages, which we absolutely are going to do, writing SQL, working with databases, working with Linux and Windows configurations to get apps running, troubleshooting logs to resolve application issues, then you should consider the AWS Developer Associate. Um, let's take a look at the roadmap as people always want to know where to go. And so I have a bunch of lines scribbled here, but to be honest, you can do this in whichever order that you want. This is just to give you ideas of how you're going to plan your own roadmap. Uh, but I, the one thing I will always say is always start with the cloud practitioner because there's stuff that I just do not cover in any of my associates because I leave it in there like building and pricing. I go really deep into there. So uh, just to make sure uh, you are safe in the cloud, you have the, the base amount of knowledge, make sure you do that cloud petition first. I don't care if you get the exam, but take my course because it's good, okay? There's a bunch of uh, roles here. So if you're going for cloud developer, you can see my pen tool out here, it's right here. So basically cloud practitioner and um, a common pattern is to do all three of the associates. I recommend doing all the general generalized associates. I feel like this all should be one exam, the, uh, the solution architect, sysops, and the developer. Uh, Google does it this way. They just have the ACE, um, the cloud engineer uh, associate, and AWS should do the same thing, but that's not what they do. They break it up across these three. Um, and so that's my recommendation. If you want to go cloud practitioner just to developer, you can do that, but you are going to have missing information from both the SA and SysOps, which is essential um, to be productive. Okay, Where you want to go after cloud developer is up to you. Um, the I don't know why I don't have an arrow here, but in order to do the DevOps uh, engineer, it's the cloud developer in the sysops. So if you're going for the DevOps one, you definitely want to do these two because a lot of the knowledge here carries over into the DevOps, okay? And you can't just do one of them. you got to do both of them. So that's a consideration for you. AWS certifications do not validate programming, technical diagramming, code management, other technical skills that are required for obtaining technical roles. I do my best to pack this stuff into the course. I'm going to keep repeating that. Um, so just understand if you feel like we're on a, a hands-on lab and it just seems irrelevant, um, it's not. It's I'm giving these additional skills to you that are missing in the certification. If you already know them, you're going to have to watch it on a faster speed. Um, but you know, again, I, I think that you should uh, do all of the hands-on labs if you can. Uh, how long will it take to pass? Well, there's a lot of content here, and because this one's more programmatically driven, I've given it a higher time of study. And again, this is whether you had the cloud practitioner. 
but you've never written code or held a tech role, if you're experienced, and it's always 20 hours, it's always around 20 hours, and so uh, you might not want to do the, the labs completely, you might just want to uh, uh, speed through them and kind of gather the knowledge watching me work through troubleshooting there and just focus on lecture content. It's up to you how you want to uh, study and, and, and go deep. I just try to give you as much content as I can and you just have to decide how much you want to do. I'd say average study, uh, study hours here is 24. Probably should be higher, like 32. I don't think I adjusted that number for my other slides. 50-50 for your lecture labs. And then the, the uh, so 25% technically for the two. 50% practice exams. If you want to pass certifications, you have to do practice exams. That is a completely separate skill from doing the work, is pa uh, passing the exam. And so that's why it has more time. One to two hours for 24 days is a good time. Um, each associate, you should be at least giving it a month each one. If you're going to do the uh, Solution Architect Associate, that's one month. The SysOps, that's one month. Uh, the Developer, that's one month. Technically, there is carried over skills like 40% or 60% depending on the exam, but you should just give, give yourself some pacing and do it over three months. If you do all the uh, certifications at the same time, you could do it in a month and a half, which again, I recommend you do that. But if you're going to do one by one, then it's going to be a three month journey for you. Okay, doing all those three associates. What does it take to pass the exam? Watch the video lectures and memorize key information. Uh, it's becoming less about memorizing key information because the it's hard. The, the exam guides are getting so large. We'll talk about this when we look at the exam guides. But I would just say that it's more about remembering the broad strokes of services, but key, key mem memorization is still important in some areas. Do hands-on labs and follow-alongs within your account. This is going to make the biggest difference for you being able to recall information, okay? Um, please, please do them in your own account. Don't just watch them. Uh, do paid online practice exams that simulate the real exam. Uh, again, you know, like if this is five years ago, you could basically just watch lectures, but now you, uh, uh, now you really do have to do practice exams because the pool of questions are so large. This is an AWS problem with exams that uh, they've kind of forced you to have to practice to, to take practice exams, paid ones and free ones. Uh, we have a free one for you on the exam pro platform. Go take a look at that. Um, and uh, we also have paid ones. So we have multiple paid ones there. So take a look at that there and see if it helps you out. The exam has four domains. Uh, each are weighed differently. So just understand that. It's really interesting because the previous one had six domains. Um, I don't necessarily agree with the, the changes with here, but they're all pretty much still here. So we have domain one, development with database services, domain two, security, D domain three, deployment, domain four, troubleshooting, optimization. There are things in the exam guide that I never experienced in the exam and other people say that are in the exam. So I'm just wondering if they're gonna come eventually. So uh, just understand that I'm trying to make content based on the exam guide, based on what I'm seeing, what other people are seeing. So if there's things that I don't have in there, it's because I'm not seeing them. And we'll talk about that when we look at the exam guide together here. Uh, where can you take this exam? At an in-person test center or at the convenience of your own home. Um, it was, uh, delivers exams via Pearson View. Um, so Pearson View, uh, if you've ever heard of the company called Pearson, the textbook company, very well known in Canada for publishing textbooks uh, for schools, they have Pearson View and that's their proctored system. And they partner with a bunch of test centers. These are basically schools or private schools that have the facilities to perform uh, the practice or the actual exams at their location. And if you have the option, I would do it in a test center because it's so much less stress, less stress because the environment is controlled. Um, whereas at home, your internet can go out. They might not like something that they see in the background. Um, you know, it's just stressful. So if you can do it at a, uh, test center, if you can't do it online, just do what you can. PSI Online used to be a option for AWS. They have fully dropped PSI, uh, PSI and now it's just Pearson View. Pearson does have the better experience, so that makes sense. Um, if you've never heard of uh, a, pro a proctor, this is a supervisor, a person who monitors the students during an examination. Um, so basically that means like when you show up for the exam, they might talk to you via text. Um, I've had some call me. Uh, some of them will make you turn your webcam on and just double or triple check your room. Uh, but for the most part, it's usually at the start of it. And I almost kind of feel like things are AI assisted now, uh, almost like they take the videos and then they review them afterwards because uh, there's been times where like, I'm not trying to break the rules, but like I've done something where they say you absolutely can't do. And I go, mm, 
I kind of feel like someone's not 100% watching me, but there is a, a level of watching occurring there, or at least if it's not in real time, it happens afterwards. So just don't do anything funny during your exam or you could lose your certification. There's people that have passed and then a week or two later, they've revoked it, right? Because they hold onto the footage and they might decide later on. So just understand that might happen to you. Your passing grade has to be 72%. It, it, you have to get around that because just the way the point system works is that you technically could have 720 points or sorry 72 percent and still fail you could have 73 percent and still fail so you want to aim ahead of that like 10 15 percent above that and, and not worry about whether you are uh uh you know like worrying worrying about getting getting too close to the wire so to speak uh, for response types there are 65 questions 50 are scored 15 are unscored so you have 15 questions that you can get wrong. Obviously, there's more than just 15 because there's a percentage of scored ones you can get wrong as well, but you absolutely get 15 free questions to mess up. There's no penalties for wrong questions, so try them. The format of the questions is multiple choice and multiple answer. And I forgot to animate this, but this big red box is very important because AWS is starting to roll out new practice exam questions. It's not in this exam yet, um, but the types that they're rolling out are ordering, matching, and case study questions. The great thing though is, is because uh, we already supported these question types and we believe that these question types should be in uh, exams to better challenge, challenge you, we already have them there. We did them a long time ago. And the reason why is that these type of exam questions exist in the Microsoft Azure certifications. And so um, uh, Microsoft has always used, at least that I've known, Pearson View. And so their platform has supported these richer type of questions and so now that AWS is deeply in um, uh, uh, into utilizing Pearson View, uh, they're not using other platforms. They can leverage the same type of questions. And so uh, I just anticipate that this will get rolled out to all certifications because why not? It's good idea. But if it doesn't, I, I still have them for you, and it's prepping you for some of these other exams. So just understand that you will see those there. Okay? We have. Uh, talk about these unscored questions because this can stress people out not understanding these unscored questions. There's 15 that are there and they will not count towards your final scores. So then why are they doing this? Well, it's used to evaluate the introduction of new questions. It's used to determine if the exam is too easy and the passing score or question difficulty needs to be increased. It can discover users who are attempting to cheat the exam or steal dump exam questions. How would that work? Well, the thing is they can introduce questions, uh, unscored questions that people might dump but they only show up for you. And so then they can def to figure out who the leak is, okay? So that's another reason why they might do that. If you encounter questions you've never studied for that seem really hard, keep your cool. And remember, they may be unscored questions. How much time do you got on your exam? Uh, 2.1 hours, you get two minutes per questions. That's uh, exam time, 130 minutes, seat time, 160 minutes. Uh, the seat time refers to the amount of time that you should allocate for the exam. It includes time to review instructions, show online proctor your workspace, read and accept the NDA, complete the exam, provide feedback at the end. Just double check these times because they change them on me all the time. Um, but uh, I did check this and I believe this is the correct one, but you know, it could be the future. So double check this stuff because you don't want to uh, be caught finding out you have less time than expected. Uh, the certifications are valid for 36 months, uh, three years before recertification. I think it just has like a free uh, a free recertification thing if you use Skill Builder. I'm not sure if that will be forever. So I don't usually don't talk about Skill Builder. Uh, I don't like the quality of content on there, um, and I have other issues with it. But um, you know, it's up to you whether you want to recertify. My attitude is that once you get a uh, certification, you don't go get recertified unless it's a higher level one, like the pros or the specialties. And even then, you don't really need to do it. So. You know, just try to save your money there. I'm just trying to uh, think think for you, um, uh, cost-wise, anyway. Let's have some real talk. This is really, really important um, because people think that when you get cloud certifications, you're going to go get a job right away. And it's not like that. It was in 2018 um, where if you wanted to get a job, if you were just talking about getting a certification in AWS, people really were taking you seriously as an applicant. But now everybody kind of has a certification. It's kind of a more of an expectation to be certified, but it's not a benefit in the hiring process. Again, varies on the certification. Uh, pros and specialties are going to go a little bit farther. But understand that the, 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 the main problem with certifications is that they don't provide 
uh, uh, specific skills. They, they're not going to test whether you know programming, scripting, SQL, IT networking, Linux, Windows and servers, project management, developer tools, application development skills, comp sci algorithms, and more. Uh, they're going to test you on whether you know how to use the cloud services. So um, uh, just understand that that's the limitations of certifications. And they're also, because they're not testing you for this, there's no obligation for content creators to include this content. However, I include it because I know a lot of people want it. Um, and if I don't have it, a good place to go is FreeCodeCamp. They have so much great free content uh, that if you just type in IT networking or Linux networking or, or Linux fundamentals, you're going to be able to have it. But I also create uh, fundamental uh, uh, content, supplementary content to this. Like uh, I recently shipped a BIM course because I felt like that was a fundamental one. So just look at Exam Pro because we might have some additional uh, materials. We have a thing called an Exam Pro supporter subscription. That is our monthly subscription. It's kind of like other ones, but the key difference is that I create some exclusive courses. You have access to me for office hours. Uh, you can get deals for future boot camps and things like that. So it's, it's a subscription plus other stuff. And this is just you supporting me to make this free content. So this is me saying thank you by trying to create content that is not certifications, but all the things around them that you need um, that I, I am not able to pack into these courses. I need to also point out that AWS itself does not care about AWS certifications for hiring for their own technical roles. Certifications serve a structured way of learning with a goalpost. So just don't put too much emphasis on certifications, but if it keeps you motivated, then yes, keep doing them but just understand the limitations of how they serve. Um, if you uh, want to get a job as a developer or a DevOps person or whatever, you need a certain amount of hours you gotta put in. For developer knowledge, it's 250 to 500 hours. I, it's the same value I say for any of these specific roles. Um, so just understand that you need a lot of hours besides the uh, 80 or 20 hours you're gonna put in the certification, okay? Uh, let me talk about our hands-on labs, this is really important. So. In our hands-on labs, we'll do our best to try and fill these gaps. We might spend considerable time before using a service developing these gap skills. Labs can be long because I want to show you everything and, and, and labs are not heavily edited because if I don't show you the troubleshooting, you're not gonna be able to do it on your own and that's really important. So yeah, we will be building like full apps before we deploy them, especially in the developer here. So expect that to be happening here. Some hands-on labs might end with failed implementations but they, are left, uh, but they are left in because of the experience of troubleshooting and giving an accurate reflection of what it's like working with that service. And that's really important because not all services on AWS are recommended. And some services, I call them zombie services, they're in the certifications, but nobody uses them and AWS might get rid of them at some point. Um, so, you know, I just don't want you to waste your time on services that people don't use and nobody likes to use. Um, or, uh, you know, if, if the, the real thing is the troubleshooting, I'm going to leave that in for you. Okay. Uh, we try to do our best to clean up costly infrastructure, but you should always be proactive and check if resources are left running. You are responsible for costs and spend in your AWS account. Um, in the AWS cloud practitioner, I tell you how to manage your spend, how to keep on top of the stuff, please keep on top of it. Or if you haven't watched that video, so you know how to. Because uh, in some videos, I just forget to delete a bucket here or there, um, and I'll resolve them in the next follow along, but depending on the order of the videos, you might not see that. So just be very aware of what you're deploying, but for the most part, I do clean up uh, the most important things. I don't think I've, I've left anything major, uh, major out, um, but you know, just understand if you can't even afford pennies, like you can't afford a dollar or two of any kind of spend, double, triple check your uh, costs and usage reports, okay? But there you go.